Well, this is going to be interesting. We're going to be making everything that we just made, except it's going to work in multiplayer. So, let's go have this guy put on a red shirt. I'm having player 2 equip a red shirt. I press I on my keyboard, I equip the shirt, everything's great. Except it's not, because if you look at this screen, he's wearing red, and if you look at this screen, he's not. That's a problem. Let's figure out how to fix it. So we're going to talk about the wonderful world of replication, rep notify, and networking in general, which is going to be very fun. This is a tutorial that you're going to want to watch and remember, because this is going to be miserable. All right, let's get started. So let's go ahead and close up everything that we already had open, um, my player state, inventory, my character, and we are going to actually look at the equip right here. When it actually equips the item, it's setting this skeletal mesh, and that is the big no-no. What's happening? So... If you don't understand authority, clients listen to the server, and that's the rule. Clients will never and can't possibly ever listen to other clients. Um, Unreal Engine is not going to allow a client to just say to another client, this is what I'm wearing. What you have to do to get other clients to see that you're wearing a certain shirt or a certain hat or whatever is tell the server, hey, I'm wearing this. And then the server is going to multicast it down to the other clients. So you're essentially asking the server for permission to put on the shirt. The server gives you permission because the server knows you have the shirt in your inventory. And we'll make another video in the future for making checks on how that works. Once the server learns that you have that shirt on, then it can tell everybody else that you're wearing it. Emphasis on can. If you just set this on the server, nothing is going to happen. The server knows, but no one else does. So it has to be multicast. So in this case, what's happening? Everything's ran on the client. We equip this item, and it goes through, it takes the item ID, and then it sets the skeletal mesh. But it doesn't do that anywhere else. We actually have to make our own separate functions for running skeletal mesh and static mesh and having them appear on the server. So, first thing we're going to do is a skeletal mesh, and then we're going to do the exact same thing, but for static mesh. Let's look at how a node actually works here, and we're going to make our kind of our own. We're going to say custom event, set skeletal mesh server and so this is gonna be fun it's gonna do all this stuff so we're gonna say what's it setting what's it setting it to and we don't really need this but you know if we want to put it on there we can now we can close that we don't actually need that anymore and we're gonna run this you guessed it on the server go ahead and compile and save we're gonna copy and paste the node and this is gonna be set skeletal mesh multi. This is multicast. It does the exact same thing. So we can bring this back down again to right there. We're going to actually get our set skeletal mesh on the server. Set skeletal mesh server. And for the target, we are going to... Now that, that makes things confusing. Um, ignore this. We're just going to bear with it for now. We're going to set this mesh to the new mesh, which is this. We'll go ahead and put that in the place of it. And that completely replaces our need for setting skeletal mesh on the client. So this happens on the server. It reaches up to the server and says, hey server, I am wearing this, you know, this shirt, and I demand that you tell everyone else that I'm wearing this shirt. So down here, we go ahead and we set this up. And then we run the multi event. Set skeletal mesh multi. It runs these two, and that's a basic setup. I'm going to go in here on player one, and I'm going to change my shirt to blue. Look at that blue shirt. Look at that. Our other client sees it. I'm going to change my shirt to red. Pretty nice. Look at that. Now our clothes are all working. Now we're going to talk about something even more fun, and then we're going to actually replace this all together. So, Next up is rep notify. So we have just replicated a shirt. Okay, so now the server can see what we're wearing and the clients can see what we're wearing. But what happens when a new client joins the game? They don't see it. The new client can't know. It hasn't been notified of it, the change yet. And it won't be notified of the change until you change your shirt a second time. So we use something called rep notify. Essentially what we're going to be using it for is telling the clients that just log in what we're wearing. So now instead of running this, we're going to actually set the mesh to its own variable. 
we're going to promote the skeletal mesh to current skeletal mesh. Okay. And we'll take this and we're going to take both of these and we're going to hit control X. Okay. And we're going to hit control X. So we take this. So we select our set current skeletal mesh. We change the replication to rep notify. And now we have the ability to actually double click on this. And this brings us to on rep. So we are going to be setting to the new mesh, which is the rep notify variable, which is this. Compile and save. And now when this is set, it sets it to the value. So it updates with this current value, which is already on the server because of the rep notify. And then it sets this. So it sets it, it resets on each client when they're logged in. So now when I log in, I hit play. Both the guys are running in green shirts. Oh, actually, that was a hat. <laughs> My bad. I'm going to go put on a blue shirt. I click blue shirt, and I'll put on a hat too. Let's go see what the other guy sees. The other guy sees me wearing my blue shirt, but I'm not wearing a hat. Now, it's set up so that when new clients are logged in, they will see everything and they'll see all the changes. Um, but the hat still is not set up. So we'll set it up the same way. Promote this to variable. Current. I'm just going to say current hat because I don't know why I said current skeletal mesh on this. This whole variable should be called current shirt. Anyway, set this to rep notify the same way we did before. And we can hit control X and just completely destroy that. Oh, actually, my bad. That's that's not good. We we want to promote this to the variable. Current hat. Alright, I'm just gonna name it to current static hat because it's not letting me name that variable because I accidentally made one mistake. Uh, that's why you can't make mistakes. Anyway, uh rep notify. And now we're good. We can go in here and set everything that we just did. So we will get hat, and then we will run our the same way we did this, except it's going to be with static mesh. So, set static mesh. This is my favorite way to do it. Custom event, set static mesh server. Target, new mesh. I'm just going to call this old mesh. Run that on the server. Compile, copy and paste. Set static mesh, multi. Same way we did before. Go ahead and multicast that. And the same way we did on this side, set static mesh multi. Old mesh, new mesh, set static mesh. Simple as that. So, in our static, gosh, this variable name. Well, that's because the variable exists as a replicated static mesh component. I don't even know what this is for. Uh, Compile again, and maybe I can get this named correctly, because I want it to be called current hat. And the on rep should be named on rep current hat. So, now we can go through here, go through the same exact process, set static mesh on the server, and we'll set it to the new mesh, which is going to be what currently exists as the current hat. Again, this happens because the current hat is set to rep notify... And that will set the static mesh on the server and tell all clients about the change, even the ones that log in. So now I can go put this hat on. Now I'm wearing this black hat. And this guy comes over here and he sees me wearing my cool black hat. So that's how you set up a system where people can see what you change. People can equip different things on their players. We have a nice inventory system and a pickup system, and it all works in multiplayer. Thank you guys for watching. If you want the project files, they're in the description. Please be sure to give it a like and subscribe. I hope you guys learned a lot in this series, and I'll see you next time.